Oh, hallelujah. Let's open our Bibles quickly to the book of Galatians, the fourth chapter, from the 28th verse. Appreciation to Pastor Dr. Gibson and his wonderful wife. God bless you. Happy to have you. Amen. <laughs> Pastor Emmanuel. Amen. Pastor Dr. Phoebe. All our doctors and engineers present. Our various ministers, leaders, workers. I celebrate every one of you and those watching online. Hallelujah. We're glad to have you. Please remember to subscribe, to share to tell someone about what's about to go down here right now. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> now we brethren as Isaac was are the children of promise. Amen. Amen. Tell anybody now, now. You, you like Isaac was, like Isaac was. Are, are a child of promise. Child of promise. So me now I, like Isaac, was, am a child of promise. When are you a child of promise? Now. now. Tell anybody now. now. The key word there is now. Amen. Amen. Now am I a child of promise. I want to teach you a message titled, Children of Promise. Amen. Oh. Children of what? Promise. Children of promise. Actually, put it better like this. Children of promises. Yes. Amen. Children of promises. Hallelujah. Amen. Children of promises. Praise the living God. Children of promises. Amen. <coughs> Romans 9 verse 9. Romans 9 verse 9. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Romans, the ninth chapter, the ninth verse. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He says, For this is the word of promise. At this time will I come, and Sarah shall have a son. Amen. Amen. What's a promise? A promise is a word or a declaration to do something at a particular time or for someone. Praise the Lord. A promise is a word or declaration to do something to someone at a particular time. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In this world which we live in, we all value and know the power of promises. When someone tells you they are going to do something, you go ahead to ask them, are you promising? Amen. And once they say it's a promise, you are relaxed and you are assured. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Someone says he's going to visit you. He says, promise me you will visit me. Amen. There's something, there's an understanding we get about promises that promise when something becomes a promise, it's not just an ordinary word. It's not just a mere say. There is a whole lot more to it. Hallelujah. And the scripture we're looking at up there says, it says, for this is the word of promise. Hallelujah. This is the word of promise. That particular word that makes a promise a promise. It said, this is the word. Of promise. This is that declaration. When God looks at a certain woman and looks at her husband and says, At this time I will come and your wife shall have a son. Amen. A word. A word. Today we're going to look at a couple of characteristics of the God kind of promise, not just the type of man. Amen. For men do make promises and um, sometimes you wonder, um, you promised but um, <laughs> you are doing the direct opposite of what you promised. Amen. So today we want to learn the kind, the God kind of promise, especially as it applies to us, to me and to you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So the first thing we want to see about promise is, the God kind of promise is that there, it is numerous. There are numerous kinds of promises. Amen. Hallelujah. 
The promises of God are numerous. Hallelujah. Amen. The promises are what? Amen. Amen. There isn't one kind of promise. In this particular verse, we look at the promise of a child or the child of promise. Amen. When God came and showed up in the life of, of Abraham and in visiting him one time, and then God gave him a word, God promised him a child. So there is the child of promise. As we'll go on, maybe during the month, there is the land of promise. Amen. There is the Holy Spirit of promise. Am I talking to somebody? There is the prosperity of promise. So the promises of God ain't one. As a matter of fact, the God we serve is a God of promises. He makes promises again and again and again. At different times, in different ways to different people. Hallelujah. Amen. So it's important we set this straight so that you do not think um, that there is only one promise. And as you read through scriptures, if I were you, I'd look for the promises of God. What is God's promise about, for example, my marriage? There's a promise of God about marriage to all of his children. The Bible says none shall lack their mate. Hallelujah. None shall what? None shall lack their mate. Hallelujah. I see such a scripture. I was single. I just go for it and lay hold on it. I say, Lord, this is for me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So there are marriages of promise. So there are numerous ones and it feels so it's, all, it's all over there in scriptures and um, you do yourself good to, to hold on to them. Amen. Amen. Number two characteristics we're going to look at about um, promises. Psalms 105 verse 42. Psalms 105 verse 42. Psalms, it's in the Old Testament. <coughs> Hallelujah. Amen. For he remembered his holy promise and Abraham his servant. Hallelujah. Amen. God remembered his holy promise. So the promise of God is holy. Amen. Amen. The promises of God are holy. His holiness, his integrity is committed to fulfilling them. You know, the same way he is holy, everything that comes from him is holy. So when God speaks a word or makes a declaration or an announcement, he's, he's not making an unholy one. Hallelujah. Amen. His promises are true. His promises are holy. Amen. I'd like you to stay with me in, in, with, in all of these and in connection with all of these because you don't understand how it all adds up. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Number three, we'll take quickly from Hebrews the, sixth chap Hebrews the sixth chapter. Hebrews the sixth chapter from the 13th verse. Hallelujah. It says, For when God made promise to Abraham because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely, blessing I will bless thee, and multiplying I will multiply thee. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. For men verily swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife, wherein God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath. Amen. The 17th verse is the key to what I want to show you. The third point there is the promises of God are unbreakable. Hallelujah. The promises of God are what? He's not a God that will break his promise. It's not a God, I will what? Men break promises. Men say something and do another. But not God. Hallelujah. Amen. And I'll, show, I'll tell you how God, God ensures. God, 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 God goes extra mile. Although, you know, he's not a man that he should lie. But he will go extra mile to make his word. Never fail. And the Bible begins to tell us of two immutable things which God uses to further concretize his promise. 
promised by nature should not be broken. But God says, okay, this is what I'm going to do just to make sure, make sure, make sure that you men understand that I ain't joking. Amen. Tell anybody, God ain't joking. Amen. Amen. When God says he's going to prosper you as a promise, he ain't playing. Am I not going to somebody? When God looks at a woman, he looks at her and says, by this time, the Bible says, in, we just looked at it, Romans 9 verse 9, he says, he says uh, this is a word of promise, by this time you're going to have your child. When God looks at a barren woman and gives her a word, he ain't playing. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I don't know if any of you have ever received a word. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know, because we are human beings and because many times we ourselves, we make promises and we do not keep, we think God is like us. And that's why sometimes you see a lot of folks begging God, you know, in their prayer, oh God, please forgive me if it's the sin that I sinned, you know, forgive me, oh God, you know, Lord, please, you know, I, you know, I know why these things are happening to me it's because, of, because you think God is like you. You have no clue what promises are like. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Tell me about God is a big God. God, is a big God. Amen. Amen. The big God. Too big. You know, let me say something. For example, if God looks at a man or a woman and says, you know, I want to use you. I want to do something great with your life. And, you know, God begins to bless this person or gift this person. And this person thinks are working. After some time, the person goes rogue. You think God will change his mind about the person. God ain't like that. I might not go to somebody. He's too big. Praise the Lord. You know what he's going to do? He's going to find someone else and bless the person better than you. The one he gave you, he won't take from you. He got more than enough. Tell anybody, he got more than enough. Amen. Amen. You, do, you, know, you know, a lot of folks still wonder, how is it that Lucifer and the devil has power and so on and so forth he's able to do? The Bible calls him the anointed cherub. He still got the anointing. God didn't take it from him. God was not short of, and God is not short of anointing. God don't have to take the, the anointing he had on Lucifer to put on you. No, 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 no. He just finds someone. Amen. Amen. And fill that person with grace. Hallelujah. And so, there are promises which God has made over your life that, you know, he intends to keep. He intends to keep. Hallelujah. Tell me about God intends to keep it. Amen. Say, God intends to keep all of it. Amen. Hallelujah. He says, we are, we are, we are in God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath. That's what we we'll call a covenant. But there are two things there, you know, um, time, 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 um, I, th I think I read it in a hurry. There are two things we have to pay attention to. The Bible speaks of two immutable things. One, the first thing is by swearing. There are two things, God, when God makes a promise, the next thing he will do is he will swear. And the Bible says when he found no better by which to swear, he swore by himself. Because you swear by something that is higher than you, but there's nothing higher than God. Anybody, there's nothing higher than God. Hallelujah, I'm so excited about that. He swore by himself. Hallelujah. Listen, when you understand this nature of God and understand, you know, it, it's so crucial that you do not think of God like yourself. Don't see God through your human eyes. You think of God small. Your expectations of him will be small too. There are many people who never prosper in this life because they are still stuck in their past. There are many people who never get the best things in life because they are still stuck in their past. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So his sister made some mistakes, you know, she fooled around, she made mistakes, you know, like um, God promised to use her, God said he was going to use her, and then she made some crazy mistakes and um, went rogue, you know, and so on and so forth, and then um, by the time she came to her senses, she had made all the mistakes that there was to make. Sixty years later, she still stuck where she was. Because she is unforgiving of herself. Thinking God is like that. Hallelujah. You know what the wise man said? 
He said, blessed is he who the Lord does not count his sins against him. Blessed is he. Praise the Lord. Blessed is he. There are people who have made mistakes, but who refuse to let their mistakes define their destinies. Because you understand something. There is a covenant of God you are working with. Hallelujah. Don't live your life by your past. And you keep making mistakes and live in bitterness all your life. It's not because of what I did. Because of what I did, that's why all these things is happening to me. There is nothing happening to you because of what you did. The, the only thing happening to you right now is because of what you are doing. You are unforgiving. You know one of the promises the Bible says? He says, there are sins I will remember no more. Have you seen that in your Bible? Hallelujah. It's a promise. Well, you know what that means? It means, well, like we just look now, it is a holy promise. It is unbreakable. Tell me why it's unbreakable. God sealed such a promise with an oath and with swearing. The day God will remember your sins against you again, it will be him denying himself because he swore by himself. Wherein God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel or of his word or of his promise, he decided to confirm it with an oath, with a covenant. That's why every time God gives a promise, he makes a covenant. Look through scripture. Every time in scripture where God gave a promise, he made a covenant. When he gave them the promise about a promised land, they, 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 they made a covenant. When he gave a promise about a child, Abraham gave a, gave a, gave a, made a sacrifice. Every promise God makes, he makes a covenant with it. And the ultimate covenant was the covenant of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 The perfect lamb that takes away the sins of the world. And he goes on and, you know, there's a promise. The promise of, hallelujah, tell me about the promise of the Holy Spirit. It's unbreakable. The promise of the Holy Spirit is unbreakable. Amen. That's why folks don't understand when people tell you things like, you know. <laughs> Hallelujah. Say, brother, I've not seen you in church for some time. Say, yes, um, say, pastor. Mm, please pray for me. I'm going through a lot. Mm. Pastor, I've lost the Holy Spirit. Oh, Pastor. Ignorance or rampage. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'll tell you something about the Holy Spirit that was sealed by the person of Jesus Christ. He says, I pray the Father that He will give you the Holy Spirit, the promise. That it shall be with you and shall be in you forever. Tell anybody forever. forever. Say forever. forever. Say forever. forever. In the Old Testament, a, a, a wonderful brother came. You know, and sang that song or wrote a beautiful psalm that uh, some, some ignorant folks still sing today ignorantly. You can, you can sing a song knowledgeably and you can sing it ignorantly. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. You see the brother or sister crying. Restore to me, ushers be bringing serviette for you. <laughs> Joy of my salvation. Oh, the whole, they'll say the Holy Spirit is touching her dead. Things are happening. And renew the right spirit. That was Old Testament. The Holy Spirit didn't go anywhere. Amen. Amen. The Holy Spirit didn't what? The Holy Spirit, you see, that's why, they, you know, some people ask questions like, you know, can you lose the Holy Spirit? You can't lose the Holy Spirit unless you send him packing. Wow. Your actions or inactions are not enough to stop him from being around. Am I talking to somebody? Yeah. Unless you yourself reject him, it is not your wrongs that's going to put him away. The Bible says he confirmed it with an oath. There's a covenant. Hallelujah. In fact, the reason why you know you did something wrong is because of the Holy Spirit. Once upon a time, you used to swim in wrong. Hallelujah. 
you dive in it. Sleep in it. Wake up in it without anything, feeling anything bad. But when the Holy Spirit starts working in your life, He's the one that pricks your conscience. Hallelujah. So He's not gone anywhere. He's right there talking to you, knocking in your heart and telling you, daughter, you're better than this. Amen. Hallelujah. Say, son, you're better than this. Amen. Amen. Say, you got me. All you need to do, all you need to do is ask for strength and yield to me and I can help you through this situation. Hallelujah. So there's a Holy Spirit of promise who's who was promised to us and whose promise to us is unbreakable. Because there was an oath and there was a swearing. God swore to give us the spirit. Hallelujah. Look at Acts. Acts, quickly. Acts, the second chapter. Acts, the second chapter. The 39th verse. Hallelujah. It says, for the promise Hallelujah. Amen. For the promise is unto you. Show me the promise. It's unto me and to my children and to all that are afar off. Even as many as the Lord will call. Hallelujah. So, you see, you see, you see, you see, you see, you see this is why, you know, I, I don't, you praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I mean, I think it was on Wednesday or so I began to say a few things. And when, 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 that's why we, we, we beg you to not just um, be in church and not study the word or understand how the things um, in God work. So how um, the things we are saying work in church. And you'll be missing out. For example, you know when God prophesies or gives the word to one, he gives to all. Amen. Amen. When God speaks to one, he speaks to what? All. He speaks to all. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So, if I were in a service and God was giving a prophecy to this man, you, you won't understand why I'm happy. Because you think I'm just happy for him. I'm happy for him, no doubt. But I'm happy because God is also speaking to me. Yes, Hallelujah. Amen. Oh my God. Hallelujah. Amen. So, when God said, through my spiritual father, you are a star. You just be looking. You shake hands with great men. You just be looking. And God will use you mightily after all these things. You just be looking. Amen. Why? Because you don't understand that the promise. Tell anybody the promise. It's unto you. To your children. To all that are afar off. Amen. So, I understand that every word which God speaks to me, hallelujah, Amen. he's not speaking to me alone. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Yes. Tell anybody he's speaking to Junior also. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. He's speaking to the children inside of me. Yes, sir. He's speaking to, to, to the sons and daughters that God has given me. So, I'm excited because God is... God is Num number four. Number four. The promises of God are transgenerational. They are transgenerational. They are transgenerational. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. God don't do short-term relationships. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 My God. God ain't short-sighted. God. God is not into one night stand and flings. Amen. He is in for a marriage. Tell anybody about marriage. 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 For the long haul. Tell anybody he's in for the long haul. He's in for what? He's in for forever. Tell about forever. forever. I'm excited. Amen. You see, please understand this particular verse is speaking now precisely about the Holy Spirit, but it pertains to all other things. Now, Peter and the uh, entire elders just finished speaking in tongues, getting filled with the Holy Ghost for the first time. And the crowd gathered and asked them, So, brethren, what shall we do? Tell us what shall we do? And he begins to tell them, He said, The promise. 
This thing which you saw we just received. It's not just for us, the disciples. It's for you too. It's for your children. Tell anybody it's for your children. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So God's covenant to prosper, we look at the promise, the promise of prosperity, the promised land. Tell anybody there's a promised land for me. Say there's a promised land for me. Say there's a promised land for me. So there's a promised city for me. I'm not talking heaven. That one is there. I'm talking earth. For every promise God made to one, he was making to all. When God promised Abraham something, he was promising Isaac. He was promising Jacob. He was promising uh, Joseph. He was promising every person inside of that man. He was promising the see Jesus Christ and was promising every person who was to believe in Jesus. So when God says, leave your father's house and I shall make your name great. He was not speaking to Abraham only. He was speaking to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God was speaking to me. Hallelujah. In fact, God is speaking to me now. God is speaking to me now. Hallelujah. Woo! Shall make my name great. Hmm. He says the promise is unto you and to your children. And to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. This is a transgenerational promise. Hallelujah. Amen. Transgenerational promise. And God looks at a man, he says, I want you to do this one thing. Uh -huh.